What's up gamers, Neo Squad here, welcome back. And today we're going to be starting a new series. This is going to be a series into Victoria 2 Heart of Darkness. This game is both produced and developed by Paradox Interactive, one of my favorite developers of all time. Um, they've also done a lot of production if they're the producers for Magicka, they're actually the producers for Knights of Pen and Paper that I've been playing a lot of. But their development studio is known for grand strategy games. Um, this is one of them. The other grand strategies that they do are Heart of Iron, Crusader Kings, and Europa Universalis, which is actually getting a new game soon, and I might be looking at that. But this is a game that I've been wanting to do a series of for a long time. I really love it. I love strategy games. Uh, the Total War games are also grand strategy. And there are a lot of different interesting things I, you can do in here. Some of the more interesting is playing as, say, Prussia and reclaiming Germany. But first, I have to quickly explain this game. Um... It is a grand strategy. You take control of a country. You can take control of any country. I could play Oldenburg right here, which was a country. It's part of Germany now. You could play Switzerland. You could play as Egypt. India is pretty much controlled by Britain. You can't really play as them then. Australia as well. Though technically you could start as UK and release Australia and then play as Australia, which might be an interesting way to play the game. Oh, uh, I may have to look into that into future playthroughs. There are several different uh, countries that I want to play as, that I want to show you, but for this playthrough, also USA is really interesting because of the independent Texas they have to take over, and then you get into a huge war with Mexico over land. But for this playthrough, I'm going to be playing as Brazil. The population of 1.5 million, it's a good population, It'll allow me to have a good size or a decent size military. They are the long, the largest um, country in South America, I believe. Yeah, by a long shot, actually. Which will give me plenty of time to grow in South America. And then, remember this date, 1870. Because that is around when the colonization run on Africa starts. So we are starting in the Grand Campaign in the 1st of January, 1836, and here we go. Now in this first video, for anyone who's unfamiliar with this game, I'm going to explain some concepts here and there, some basics of how everything works. Uh, don't worry if you, don't, if you get lost. This, I'll, uh, I'll be going over a lot of these things over and over. If you want me to explain anything, just ask. Now right now, it's on the terrain map mode. This, in my opinion, is the least useful map mode in the entire game, and it happens to start on this. You see as I zoom in, we get little names. These places are actually the individual territories. And this bold area right here, if we go to region map mode, is a region. Things tend to happen on a region level. Factories are built in a region instead of in an individual territory, but war, uh, capturing, you don't capture a region, you capture one territory at a time. So that's something to keep in mind. So this territory map mode is nice, especially because if you look here, say the Amazons, I'll control most of it, but these two territories I don't, and I actually have them listed as cores of Brazil which I will get into, but if you look, I own most of this, but if you go to political map mode, here is the border of Brazil as it stands. So those two I will go into, but first we're going to look at Paraguay, because they have this territory right here, which is part of our large region. So that's actually going to be our first war. The nice thing about showing off Brazil is they start with a lot of wars at hand. 
and they start as a decent power. Right now I'm a secondary power. We'll go into that real quick. They're the top eight countries in the world are great powers, and then the next eight are considered secondary powers. Great powers can put people in their sphere of influence, which I will get into once I am a great power and I'm concerned with that. A secondary power, you can't do that, but you can colonize. And in this, expan in this newest expansion, House of Darkness, there's something called Colonial Power. Before that, I could literally play as Brazil and take over at least two-thirds of Africa as soon as 1870 came around. No problem. That doesn't exactly work that way anymore, and I really like that change. Now it's a lot harder to get a lot of colonies, and you really have to manage it better. And I'm not that experienced with it yet, so it'll be interesting once we get there. So let's see, let's go through the tabs at the top. First one's production. We will be coming back to this one. Uh, we aren't worried about factories right now. I actually don't think we can build any factories. But as you see, they are by uh, the region, not those individual territories. Go to the budget. Now we have a negative 24 uh, pounds per day. Because of the time period, the British pound is the largest currency, so that's what everything is based on, if you see the little pound symbol. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tax everyone the max, and I'm actually going to lower this slider to about 70%, and that will be essentially the strength of my land units, then the strength of navy units, and this is spending on construction which we won't be doing construction until we really get into factories and maybe when we get into railroads. So we don't have to worry about that now because both of those two are zero. Education, normally I want to throw this to 100%. Brazil is, an interesting, is in an interesting situation in that it can't really afford to set it to 100% right away. And in fact, I might go below 80 later. And I'll put administration to about 75 you want to bring it up because that'll increase your taxes that you can collect but if you bring up too much then you eventually get too many bureaucrats and you're actually losing money because they're just sitting around not actually helping and the last slider down here is military spending it's default 50 percent i'm bringing that way down to uh 10 percent that way we will, still we will still have some military that we can recruit, but it's really not going to do much. What this is going to do is make people leave the profession of soldier, so overall lowering our military. But we can't really afford to do anything else right now. And right over here, taking and repaying loans, you almost never want to just take a loan. If you hit zero and you're a civilized nation and you're in the negative, you'll start automatically taking loans as you need them. That's usually the preferred way, and then once you get the money back, you will repay the loans so you don't pay interest. As Brazil, I'm sure I'm going to be showing that off to you. Uh, in the early game, again, my economy is not that amazing. Technology. Now, there are five main technology areas, Army, Navy, Commerce, Culture, and Industry, and each one has five lists. I, I like to call them tech trees, but they're really tech lines. Because it's like, just take this one, and then you can take that one, and then you can take that one. Though a lot of these have certain date requirements, like experimental psychology can't re re cannot discover before 1850. The first thing that I'm actually going to do is go to industry, and I'm going to aim for medicine. It'll increase the supply limit, which is important for military, and we'll get to that. But the most important thing is inventions right here, like genetics heredity, which will give me population growth. Adding to my population is going to be a huge boost, both all to my economy, to my military, and to national foci, which, again, I'll get to once I'm going along. And it's only 0.02%, but that actually adds up really quick, 
Especially when you have 1.5 million people in your country. But what happens is, when I discover medicine, all these inventions will go over to this area. And I believe it's at the beginning of every month, I'll get a certain percent chance of discovering each of them. Whew, so, I'm going to start with basic chemistry. That will be our first technology. Now, to raise the speed of technology, there's literacy, which your clergy teach people how to read and write. And there's this right here, is just the total research points per day. Now, there are certain technologies that can raise this, but the biggest thing that I'm worried about is right at the top of the tooltip, the clergyman provide, 2% is optimal. Now, when you hit 2% and above at 2%, that's the maximum research points clergy can give you. Uh, there are clerks that can give you research, but you need factories to make them do anything and to actually have them. So I'm not worried about that. Skip politics, come back to that. So with that in mind, with the clergy in mind, there are two ways to really enforce clergymen. One is spending more on education. If clergymen are being paid better, uh, more people are likely to go to that profession. And two is right here. If you see this tooltip, uh, the, pr the people in the primary or accepted culture give 3.58 focus points, but we only have a maximum of two. The technology for that is culture and it's political thought. Each one gives another ma max national focus. Right now we have two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two largest population regions. I'm going to press this button here to do a national focus. A national focus in this game allows you to encourage the population of a region to go towards something. I'm going to be promoting clergymen right here, but I can promote certain production, make it, make them loyal to certain parties. Uh, in your colonies, you can promote immigration, and so on. So I'm just going to do clergymen and clergymen, and there's my two. And you see this this area right here is actually going to be very useful. As you see, it'll tell me what percentage are in those regions. So ideally, you get every region to 2%. That'll also help with your literacy, because literacy is also per region and gets added up and averaged. And the more literate you are, the more research you get from literacy. All right, politics. I'm in H&M's government, which means that there are elections. There are a lot, and I mean a lot of countries, that do not have elections. And people will eventually require them and push for them and revolt if you don't give them it. The biggest issue in Brazil is going to be slavery. Right now it's allowed, and eventually we'll need to outlaw it. Outlawing it will cause us problems because we have such a large slavery population. It's going to cause a lot of unemployment. It's going to flood the industry with a lot of people that we have to pay now and we won't be able to afford to pay them. It's going to flood with a lot of poor. So hopefully we get the technology to manage that before we have to go uh, and turn slavery off. And let's see, anything else? Movements. This is for revolts. Decisions. Fatherland volunteers is something that we are going to aim for. Army decision making in the countries at war. We'll lose war exhaustion, which makes people happier. Which more war exhaustion makes people less happy during wars. And we gain prestige. I don't think I mentioned, but real quick. Great powers and everything. This, is, this ranking is decided by prestige plus industrial power plus military power. So my total's 15. And if you go, number 15 has as many as me, actually. And that one has less. And then Switzerland, which is right below me, only has 14. Now these numbers may look big up here, but with the, with the way Brazil starts, I start with some war options that can add a lot of prestige. And the Ottoman Empire is on the decline in this game. 
it's actually very hard to play as the Ottoman Empire and remain relevant. So they're going to slowly drop out. And I'm planning on taking their spot. Of course, every other country is planning on doing that as well. Alright, so we're moving on. Trade window. I never touch this. I never touch this. It's automated. The automation does an excellent job. There's very fringe cases where you'd want to do this manually. And it's not worth the time. It just makes a lot of pause and go. And a lot of the times the AI just does it better. The most important thing is hovering over the tooltip. What our best export and imports are. Our imports are important because if we're planning on taking over territory, it's usually best to take areas that produce what you are importing to increase to improve your trade balance. With that said, let's move on to the diplomacy. I have three diplomatic points which I will be using. Again, that brings up this window that I've been clicking on my flag over here for. Uh, I will get to that, but first military. That 12 right there is how many people are in this, how many thousands of people are in this uh, group. You see 3, 6, 9, 12, 12,000. 3 infantry brigades and 1 cursier which is essentially an advanced cavalry. And down here we have 2 infantry. I'm actually going to set my military up here because my Paraguay is my first target. And you see in each of these areas, as I hover over them, in the bottom right, it shows supply limit. That's how many thousands of people that territory can support. And with technology like medicine, I can actually get a bonus to the supply limit. It's base, there's, because I'm the owner, I get 2.5 here. A multiple of 2.5. And then there'll be a multiplier below that when I get medicine that says from technology. Oh, and with all that said, I'm going to now set up my military. And I'm going to start building a military. I can support right now, I can support 12 brigades. Because I have that many soldiers free. Technically more soldiers, but there's, there's some hard details that I don't really need to get into. And what I want to do is actually produce one, two, three of those. I have one cavalry, so I'll do two of those and one more. And those plus my others will allow me to produce three armies of 12,000, each with two infantry brigades, one cavalry brigade, and one artillery brigade. And that's going to be a very strong military this early in the game. And I'm just going to take this territory right here, Castro. And right here, going to declare it a rally point. So as those units are built all around Brazil, they'll, be, they'll all come to Castro and unify into one military. Whew, and the last thing I have to do before I unpause and actually start playing this game is spend my diplomacy points. Now Paraguay is what I want to first declare war on. I could just go declare war, which costs one diplomacy point, acquire core, which will give me 10 prestige if I win. However, in House of Darkness, you can no longer do a war justification while you're at war with them. And I actually want to justify a war to humiliate. This will give them, I think, minus 25 prestige and me plus 5, something like that. There are other options, but this one's going to be the best for the infamy cost. Infamy is right here, this little red flag. It used to be called bad boy. If you get 25 or more infamy, the world sees you as an evil country, and at least half the world, including multiple great powers, will declare war on you and just come and destroy you. 
I can uh, add this war goal humiliate without justifying it during a war. However, if I add it during the war, it'll cost me three infamy. If I justify it beforehand, it'll take about half a year. But say I get halfway through that and they find out that I'm doing this, I'll only get 1.5 infamy. And to be a warring country in this game is really all about managing your infamy. So I'm going to proceed with that. Now I have two diplomacy points left. And I'm going to use this to start put, pulling together allies. Now, so the people who have my territories or my cores are Paraguay, Bolivia has this little territory, and Colombia, which has one right here. So those three I don't want to ally with, obviously, because I'm just going to be declaring war on them. If I don't ally with anyone, usually people will offer me alliances all, all the time, which that can work. But personally, I like to control the alliances myself. Now, a lot of times Peru goes with Bolivia or Colombia allies with Bolivia. So I'm not really going to touch them. I'm going to go up here to the USCA and ally with them so Colombia has to fight an extra war. Because as it stands, Colombia will probably be the hardest country for me to actually attack. So I'm going to form an alliance. They will accept it. Proceed. And they'll accept it when I own pause and a day passes. And then I could ally with Venezuela to add more surface area because as it stands, there's only one territory that I can actually get into Colombia from. And adding more surface area will make it a lot easier. So I think I'll do that. Another good option is to ally with Argentina. The problem with that I'm going against Paraguay right away. Argentina will probably go against Bolivia for these territories. In which case, I may not be able to get my core right away. But if I support my ally, I'd end up in a truce with Bolivia for a while. I'm actually going to form an alliance with Venezuela. And they'll accept. And I have an alliance offer from Chile. Now this is an interesting one because a lot of time they will just go right towards Bolivia to take out these territories. Bolivia really just gets pounded on. If you want a really hard game, start in South America as Bolivia. And everyone will just come after you. I'm going to accept the alliance from Chile for now. And unpause. Just go one day. Venezuela accepted and USCA accepted. So now I have vision from them. Which you can't really see here, but this is one of the few times terrain map modes is, is handy. So you can see where you either have troops or where your ally is and has troops. So, my military is getting into position. I am building more military. You'll notice that my earnings actually went down. That's not because I'm everything I did in the budget isn't working. It's because I'm actually purchasing goods to build these military units. So that is going to be episode one of Victoria 2, uh, Heart of Darkness. If you like what you're seeing, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, if you really like it, go ahead and favorite and share with your friends. All that stuff helps me out a ton. But otherwise, this has been Neo Squad, and I will see you guys later.